gon' fight. We going to baby. Let's get it. Uh-uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. Let's get it, man, for real. It's about to be exciting, y'all. Let's get it on. Oh, baby. Let's get it on. Yeah. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I know you guys are excited, man. You know, y'all here for the documentary. Let's get it on, man. It's been some time. It's been some weight. It's a rainy day outside. Hey, I'm here, man. Let's get it on, for real. <laughs> You know, a lot of people have been saying, man, you know, you filming a documentary yet, man? Yes, man, I'm filming a documentary, man, because I feel like the first um, half of my life came to an end, and the other half, man, is just beginning, man. It's just beginning, and I'm glad you guys are on this journey with me, that's on this ride, that's on this, you know, that's on this with me, man. It's going to be fun. You feel me? Welcome, you guys, to Drake's story, man, so sit tight. Welcome. Welcome. My name is DeAndre Antoine Cherry. As you all know, man, I'm from D.C. Born and raised, man, right here from D.C., man. You know, where not too many people come out of, but I'm trying to change that narrative, man. But, um, yeah, man, it's just been, you know, cool, man. Being right here from Washington, D.C., um... You know, I would love to travel to go a lot of other places, man. I think D.C. is just the tip of the iceberg just for me. You know, um, a lot of people that I come across with and meet and interact with and network with, um, it's not too many people that um, are from D.C. I met a lot of people from Atlanta, Georgia, L.A., New York. Um, so, man, you know, them places that I would love to travel and be. But, um, man, 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 D.C. is where it all started for, uh, for me. Um, as everybody knows, man, I'm in a wheelchair and, uh, I don't always, I wasn't always in a wheelchair, man. Um, it was about the age of 13, um, that I was in a wheelchair. I know some of you guys probably like, man, you're going to skip all the way to 13, man. I tuned into the documentary. <laughs> nah, man, I'm going to take you back, man. I'm going to take you back to where it all began, man. For real, for real, where it all began for me at was the age of three years old, you guys, man. Um. I mean, I, of course, I didn't skip birth, you know, <laughs> I, I was born by a beautiful, beautiful mom. I was uh, given birth by 
you know, by a beautiful mom, um, Ramona. That's my beautiful mother, though. But uh, yeah, man. Um, early, uh, early at uh, in life, man, and in, in age, um, I fell a lot, you know. Before, you know, I was in a wheelchair, man, and as as a little boy, you know, I was falling a, a lot, and you know. My mom, you know, did what, you know, a mom would do. You know, she took me to the doctors and tried to figure out, you know, man, why is, why is my son keep falling and whatnot? You know, what's going on? And, you know, and me, you know, as a little boy trying to figure out, you know, you know, I'm falling a lot too. Hey, what's going on? But, you know, um, I was diagnosed at the age of three years old with a disability. My disability is called Chaco Marie Tooth Syndrome. And um, I explained, you know, I've been in a wheelchair since the age of 13 um, because at that point, um, the disability has affected my muscles and my legs, you know, preventing me from walking. And but, you know, when I was diagnosed at the age of three, you know, you know, I would fall. I would still be able to walk. I can move my fingers and my hands. You know, I want to say it was roughly about the age of seven years old where I stopped moving my fingers and my hands, you know, and it was, it was a challenging experiment. I mean, not experiment. It was a, it was very challenging to go through, you know, and I guess you can call them, call it an experiment because a lot of people haven't experienced, you know, such, you know, but, um, yeah, man. And, you know, growing up was, you know, it was, it was awesome. Also, like I said, it was, you know, difficult in a way, you know, besides my family, man, every, everything, you know, my family was awesome. My mom was awesome. The father figures that I had in my life was awesome. You know, I think more so I battled within myself for a long, long time, you know, trying to accept myself, you know, because I had a disability. Not only did I have a disability, you know, I wanted to fit in with everybody else, you know, um, especially, you know, as life goes on and as you get older, you know, um, you start meeting new people or you, you know, you might meet a girlfriend or whatnot, whatnot, you know, and another thing um, that, you know, bothered me, I mean, not necessarily bothered me, but, you know, something that stuck out to me because, you know, I was in a wheelchair or the fact that I had a disability or that my hands were such a, a certain way or when I was walking, I walked a certain way, you know, I had eczema and man, oh man, you know, growing up, man, um, having eczema, whew, man, it, it, something, my, my sister said one, one, at one time, my sister said, man, look, bro, it looked like you got third degree burns on your legs, you know, and my arms wasn't that well off from it, but, you know, I was very ashamed, you know, I'm sitting right here feeling so comfortable, you know, doing this <laughs> documentary right now, you know, with a short sleeve shirt, man, you know, a lot of people, um, some may know me, you know, when I was, you know, young, you know, who was close to me. I wouldn't wear a, a, a long, a short sleeve shirt. I wouldn't wear shorts, you know. I would just wear long sleeve shirt and long sleeve pants because I would be ashamed of how my, you know, skin looked. I don't, I didn't want to look at it because it felt like it looked horrible. You feel me? Like a, if, you know, a woman, you know, I like if someone said, you know, oh, you was attractive. I felt as though it was just, you know, just to show some, I guess, compassion because I was in a wheelchair more so than that. Because, you know, I felt like a certain way. You feel me? They always say, man, I mean, yeah, um, you can love someone else all day long. But if you don't love yourself, then, you know, it, do, it don't really matter. You feel me? And at certain times, yes, I dealt with you know, loving myself because you feel me? Like, I mean, I have nothing wrong. You know, everybody know me. I'm a kind, loving person, sending out the love, all shooting out the love. But, you know, being loved and one of the, you know, like I, I knew that was just, okay, because I'm in a wheelchair or whatnot, or people say this because, I'm, or because I'm in a wheelchair, but I didn't accept myself. I didn't, you know, wanted to look at myself, man. It's a picture, you know, uh, going through, man, um, doing these documentaries, man, as a young kid. Um, 
where I, I had this jacket, man, and in this jacket, my mom bought me this jacket. I believe she bought me this jacket. She was like, man, this jacket look nice. I think my baby, man, you, you know, Dre gonna like this jacket. And, you know, of course, I, I liked it in a lot, I guess. But um, like I spoke, man, with, you know, having eczema, you know, growing up, man, which, man, really, 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 like, kicked my ass, you know, um, as, you know, growing up. But, you know, and like I said, I didn't want to like look at myself. I didn't want to look at my arms and stuff like that. So it was a jacket that I always wore in the house regardless, man. You know, so yeah, I, I would sleep in the jacket. You know, once I get out the shower or whatever or the tub, I would put the jacket right on, you know, because I didn't want to, you know, look at the jacket. I didn't even want light on in the room to really look at myself. You feel me? I felt like I felt ashamed. You feel me? Like it was, you know, those things, you know, battling it, you know, with in yourself, you know, and also, you know, I was, you know, I mentioned um, the third or four of my mother's children, and I was the only one with a disability, so, you know, like, they say all things, man, happen for a reason or whatnot, so, you know, at, a, at eight, nine years old, I'm not thinking, like, man, okay, this is for a reason, but I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You feel me? Like, what is going on? So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> but, man, Life, you know, would eventually, of course, man, get better, you know, throughout the times, man. And um, and I, I mentioned, you know, I have a beautiful mother who raised all four of us, man, Ramona, Mrs. Cherry, my mother, you know, who's so, so beautiful. Um, man, she did her damnness, you know, she even worked two jobs, you know, to put food on the table, to provide, to do everything she needed to do, man. And I want to thank my mother. You know, not too recently, my mom, you know, I saw my mom and my mom said um, something that resonated with me. You know, she wanted to know, you know, was she ever a good enough mom? So I, I must not be doing that much of a good job because uh, that much of a good job showing you that you are and that you did because you asked that question. But I mean, some moms do. But I want to let my mom know, man, that you did everything. You did your damnness. You did your hard work. And you did everything. You feel me? I, 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 I can't complain. The best mother on, on earth. The best mom. And I love my mom. You feel me? Um, you know, growing up, man, stories with my mom, I think were some of the kind of like funniest in a way were stories like were, you know, going to the doctors when my mom had to take me to the doctors, man. And like, man, she 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 did not want nobody to play with her baby. Like, you feel me? Like, I understand he got a disability, but he don't got a mental disability. So don't try. to. I, I understand, you know, they 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 doing their job and I'm sitting there like, mom, they doing their job. And she like, I, 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 I know that. But. No, they trying to play games with you and try to think you crazy. Nah, like, but you feel me? Because, hey, it happens. It happens, though, man. But, hey, my mother did the damnedest, man. And almost, <laughs> almost every doctor's trip was hilarious. It's a story for each other, man. It's a story for each other, man. And just everything, you know. Um, every Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Christmas, man, you know. Um, we, well, I... I celebrated Christmas, I guess, all the way up to like the age of like 15, 16, man. Like I said, man, my mom was, you know, the single mother, you know, did her damnness on everything, you know, and I appreciated everything, you know, so I wasn't that type of kid, you know. Ah, uh, man, I still want something at 17 or I still want something at 18, but knowing that she's breaking her back, you know, to provide and you feel me? So, hey. My mother, my mommy, I love you. You did, you did the damnness, you know. And some would say, man, you know, what about your dad? What about your dad, man? Man, my dad, man. Well, I had multiple father figures in my life, man. Um, I don't really want to say too many names because I don't know if they want to be, you know, associated with this, man. But, you know, if you watching and you know me, you know, you know who you are. But I had multiple um, father figures throughout my lifetime, man. And... Um, but my actually biological father, man, is, it seems though at a young age, you know, he wanted something to do with me. He wanted, you know, to be in my life. And it, it seems to, to me, he wasn't too for sure. 
But, you know, of course, as I got older, man, I would just, you know, would be in the house or I'd be outside or whatever, you know, and I hear my mom even talking to maybe my aunts or my sisters. And, yeah, I saw that father of yours or I saw your dad. I saw him at the store or whatnot. And, you know, just be all type of crazy, crazy stories, man. Just crazy stories. And I'd be like, oh, well, man, hey, you know, but as I got older, man, and, you know, and, you know, I'd be going to work and I'd see him or I'd be coming home from school and, you know, I'd just be riding around and I'd see him, you know, and he would give me his phone number every time, man, but I would reach out to him, you know, and it just seems like, especially like the last time, I think it was just, you know, it was just, I guess, over, I guess, at that point of trying because I tried, you feel me, despite what type of relationship you had with my mom or the relationship that you may have with, you know, whoever, we never really had a relationship. Um, but, you know, like I said, the last time, you know, I guess was, I guess, done trying. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't feel like it was right for me to call you dad, regardless of you or my father or, 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 or not. You know, you see me thousands of times. You wanted to take pictures with me, you know, all this other stuff. But at the same time, you know, I don't, I don't. What, what did you do? You feel me? What did you do? I wanted a, a close relationship. I was, you know, at, and, and this, you know, was at least, what, five years ago that I tried to attempt to reach out to you because I feel as though, you know, every man will want their dad in their life, regardless, you know, what it is, you know? Yes, you know, if you play sports or, you know, you you know, you on his team, you will want your father to be there. You will want him to support you or whatever like that. Then I, I threw all that aside. You feel me? Yes, I didn't play sports, <laughs> you know, and I wasn't on a basketball team or whatnot. But I was me. I was DeAndre. And I was just trying to figure out where were you at? So where were you? But when I reached out to you and you got upset to say your own other sons or, or children don't even call you by your name, well, you didn't do anything for me. And even when then I tried to reach out to you, you made it seem as though that um, I, you know, you didn't, I wasn't accepted. You didn't want to accept me. That's not my son. You feel me like that? Was it because I'm in a wheelchair? Well, like, what is it? I don't know. But I mean, hey, I let bygones be bygones, man. And like I said, the father figures that came into my life, I cherish the most. And I and only one man that I called dad, and that was Walter. That was Walter Stringer, man, who passed away when I was seven years old, man, in 1998. And that was my dad. So I mean, hey, if if hey, you feel me? Like I said, the door was open to chat with you, man. You feel me? And that 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 was my dad experience. That was my that. I mean, you feel me? Like, hey, man, life life is crazy. Life is crazy. Man, oh man. The life that we live, you only get one life, and you gotta live it to the fullest. God wake us up each and every day, cause he ain't through with us yet. But you guys, this is my life, my story, my journey. <laughs>